Hello everyone. My name is uh, Alexey Rempel. I am working at Pilgrotronics. And uh, most of my hacking time, I'm doing things related to networking and kernel stack, kernel network stack. And uh, most of our recent projects I was working on are kind of related to different uh, type of industries, medical devices, agricultural devices, and so on. Uh, so I gathered some of uh, this uh, experience from these projects and picked up some of topics which I think are kind of interesting from environmental point of view, like technologies which help to reduce some kind of uh, footprint uh, on one on or another side, for example, to reduce the uh, amount of uh, energy uh, needed to accomplish the same task, like, for example, you are running network and uh, using less energy is always a good idea, or, uh, for example, if uh, we use one gigabit link, why not use a bit less copper needed for the same task or something like this. Um, so I chose this kind of technologies and in this case are single pair Ethernet, uh, which is, well, it says for itself, it is using only one pair compared to different kind of Ethernet. I don't know how many of you are actually know about single pair Ethernet. Can you rise? Oh, cool. <laughs> it is much more as I expected. And uh, are there actually people working in companies which are making uh, hardware for single pair Ethernet? For example, FI switches or something like this? Anyone? The Texas Instruments? Analog devices? Yeah, yeah. So just raise your hand. If you, if you have questions, then there's analog devices here. <laughs> um, well, except of uh, just using single pair of Ethernet, you can use next level of this technology is the power over data line which is kind of like power over Ethernet, but uh, optimized for single pair Ethernet. I don't know anyone of using it already. No? Okay. I'll tell for some words about this. And uh, last but not least, uh, energy efficient Ethernet. I have noticed it's kind of broken. How many of you are using this? Okay. Is it working for you? I mean, uh, how many of you disabled it on purpose? <laughs> okay, um, so the last part of this talk will be about how to um, use tools with kind of limited uh, budget and debug energy efficient Ethernet, so you'll be able to get hands dirty and probably fix some drivers. There's a lot of fixing needed. Uh, so I hope this part of talk will help you or at least a kernel. Um, I have noticed, uh, I have, well, except of just working and doing things for other customers, I love to hack by myself on dry day printers and things. And I, I think this kind of technology is really usable, not only for automotive or industrial things, it is really usable for uh, hackers and makers. So I hope this technology will really find the way to this scene. For example, uh, in my case, I, was, I will be really able to optimize my dry day printer just by using only two cables instead of like thousands. So some words about single pair of Ethernet uh, for people who don't know how this works. Um, the first picture is uh, Handout Base TX, which is using one twisted pair to transmit and other twisted pair to receive this part and uh, well it is not 
not really optimized and not really good for using this kind of technology inside of cars, uh, a lot of weight and so on. And uh, in case of 1000 base sticks or gigabit Ethernet, we'll have four twisted pairs which are used at the same time for transmitting and receiving. So if we are able to use same twisted pairs for transmit and receive, why not optimize it and use just one twisted pair for transmitting and receiving, but with higher speed. So this single pair Ethernet is actually about uh, this kind of optimization. And uh, suddenly it is not backwards compatible to existing technologies and uh, you just can't drop in and make it work and for everyone. And this kind of technology was optimized for many different tasks. For example, uh, if you'll see um, something like 110 or 1000 base T1, it means it's mostly optimized for automotive. It will be pre-configured and will create the link as fast as, fast as possible. I don't know how many of you have experience by plugging the Ethernet cable and it takes seconds or tens of seconds until the link is created. And it is not acceptable for automotive. You should create the link as fast as possible within milliseconds. And uh, in this case, it is already have pre-configured speeds and roles. There is no possibility to have on one side 10 megabit and another side uh, 1000 megabits, it is already fast for configured and there are uh, pre-configured roles like master and slave role. Um, so this, in this case, the link speed will, uh, link creation speed is really fast. And if you'll see this kind of suffix at the end of description, for example, L or S, uh, L is for long range. In this case, for example, if you will see 10 base T1 L, it is single pair Ethernet for long range. Very good as a replacement for kind of field bus or can bus and some of industrial or home automation cases. Uh, the length is like 1000 or 2000 meters in some cases. And uh, there is even some optimization for explosive environments. So you'll be able to reduce uh, um, the signal uh, amplitude. So things should not explode in this case. <laughs> and if you'll see this S at the end, it is for multi-drop links. In this case, you can like create a link with multiple devices on one cable. Uh, like with CAN, so you don't need switches for this. Uh, it is practical, but it, there's all of this optimization, they are not for free. I mean, you should uh, drop something. For example, for fast link creation, we remove authentication, so you can't just combine different devices and they will find out uh, what is used for what case and so on or in case of long range, um, well, I don't know what is actually, well, we reduce the speed, for example, to, it is not possible to have 100 base day one L, which is 1000 meters long. I think this, uh, I don't know, analog devices, do you know about 100 base day one L? <laughs> or there's, what kind of limitation we have? 500 meters? Okay. Um, so why should anyone will replace existing uh, infrastructure like CAN bus or um, Bus, bus, uh, field bus uh, to use uh, Ethernet instead of this. Um, it usually depends and it's really hard to argue in different cases. For example, I have talked with uh, BMW guys uh, uh, here making uh, automotive things 
and it is in case of it depends on uh, how much CPU power and how much software stack you are able to get in your controller. If you have a lot of CPU power and you can um, implement IP stack inside of your application, then it is probably a good idea to take Ethernet instead of CAN. Uh, if you really have some limited CPU, limited RAM, then in this case it is really a better idea to still have CAN instead of this. For some applications, for some customers, I have seen that it is good to still run IP because you have different connections, you have uh, Wi-Fi, you have uh, LTE, and if you're already doing a lot of IP, then converting it into CAN is not really optimal thing. And uh, compared, for example, with CAN, we already have some standardization passed for this or a lot of already created infrastructure which is accepted for uh, different kind of applications like uh, PTP or quality of service and so on. So you'll be able to get this kind of for free with uh, already tested and implemented uh, infrastructure. In case of CAN, uh, using PTP, I don't know, I have, didn't see an uh, already implemented standard or at least in case of Linux, I haven't seen uh, open source implementation which is standard, as I, standard which is uh, implemented according to some, some of standard. So is it complicated to make new devices with single pay internet. Um, it depends, well, our hardware guys was able to glue a T1L5 to some existing ASIC uh, USB to Ethernet converter. So this is one of examples how this can look like. Um, it works. We needed some iterations with kernel to make things uh, uh, replaceable. For example, many Ethernet drivers do not accept some kind of different files and uh, there was a lot of assumptions, pre assumptions, which needed to be fixed. And if this is done, then you can just replace the file and to use any existing Mac combined with this file. Uh, so, I tried to compare different projects which I was working on and ask people why are they starting to use single pay Ethernet. And for example, in case of medical devices, um, there are at least projects I'm working on are migrating to Ethernet because, well, there was different kind of uh, existing, pre-existing uh, uh, proprietary protocols and uh, it is hard to keep them running on new kernels and uh, keep things secure with new kernels uh, or keep, se keep things uh, secure with old kernels so they need to run some kind of mainline thing and uh, Ethernet is the way to go so migrating to Ethernet is the first step and migrating to single pair Ethernet is current next step. So for example, imagine a medical device monitoring uh, uh, health uh, status of patient which has, well, less cables and needs uh, just uh, smaller connectors. In case of um, industrial use cases, there are different customers uh, I was working with and um, they migrating from CAN where possible. Main challenge is to keep things uh, as cheap as with CAN. Um, in some cases it is really possible, so they have some, I will show some pictures of uh, existing switches uh, which running uh, with power over data lines, so they are providing power uh, to sensors or to 
uh, actors and it is kind of nice to reuse existing protocols and uh, reduce uh, maintenance overhead for this kind of devices, especially if they are connected to internet somehow, uh, they are in dangerous part of IoT where things should be updated and secure. Uh, so keeping things mainline is really easier to, for many of them. Uh, same about um, agricultural devices. Uh, in this case, I'm talking about kind of tractors or harvesters uh, running on fields with uh, uh, existing uh, CAN protocols. Uh, well, agriculture is kind of close to automotive, but with different kinds of restrictions. And uh, the, there was using many existing protocols like ISOBOOS and so on, but all of them are slow. I mean, can is slow, so uh, using single pair Ethernet uh, is, well, way, way to go if it's possible. And uh, some of projects are migrating and trying to give some uh, hybrid implementations like par parallel can and single pair Ethernet over the same uh, can twisted pair. So, for example, if devices are uh, from the same vendor, then just switch from CAN to single pair Ethernet if possible. So, in all of these fields, at least for me, I don't know if uh, you have this situation, you have s seen similar patterns and then you see it everywhere. Like uh, I was working with single pay Ethernet with some customers, now I see it like everywhere. So it looks for me that uh, uh, there is kind of trend to migrating to single pay Ethernet and uh, well, it seems to be to a way to go for many reasons, like uh, easier to maintain, easier to uh, test. Um, for example, if we use uh, Ethernet controller, it is most probably already tested by many different projects. So we will just replace the file and it's still most of this uh, uh, software stack is tested for with different projects. Compared with CAN, it is more like uh, really uh, restricted uh, or some special use case not really uh, seen by many projects. So as next, I'll show you some info about uh, power over data line, if you don't know it. Um, I, have, I assume you have heard about power over Ethernet. So Usually, in case of power over Ethernet, we use one twisted pair to, for example, for plus and one twisted pair for minus. And in case of like power, or, power Ethernet 4, we use all four uh, twisted, pair to, twisted pairs to provide uh, power. And in case of power over data line, there is a different challenge. So you'll need, we have only one twisted pair and you we need to use one wire for plus, one wire for minus. And in this case, uh, to filter your signal is a bit diff more difficult compared to power over Ethernet. So it will not be because compatible with power over Ethernet devices. Um, it's um, compared to power over Ethernet, uh, it's still hot pluggable and uh, you'll be able in most cases to um, detect uh, device which is connected uh, and uh, you'll be able to classify the device. Usually you should be able to see like, okay, device which is attached, it will need some uh, amount of, some budget of power. And from the switch point of view, you should be able to uh, 
be able to uh, to re resolve this amount of power or not to enable this device. So, uh, power over Ethernet is uh, using uh, resistor or um, voltage drop or whatever technologies, and uh, for power over data line, uh, we are using SCCP, which is kind of like uh, one wire communication protocol. And in most cases, most important questions like if you are talking about mainline things, is it implemented? Is it mainline? Yes, it is already, uh, at least uh, in case of uh, power over data line, it is already mainline. Um, you should be able to use ETH tools to control power just on uh, top of your uh, the, uh, net link. For example, in this uh, we are, um, I'm listing all uh, available interfaces and in my case there is a T1 L1 interface uh, which is currently not enabled from um, network administrative point of view and with ATH tools, we are able to see if this is actually providing power and it shows no, it's not providing the power. And you're able, independent of actual network status, enable power. In this case, you'll need to use this command and well, voila, it will work. Um, all of these paths are already mainline. You'll be able to use current Linux kernel 6.4 and ETH tools uh, 6.3 uh, with all of these commands and this should work. But you'll need to use uh, needed drivers and uh, device tree configuration to uh, make all of these parts work. Here's one example of real hardware. Um, this is switch using uh, T1L standard and uh, as you can see uh, connectors for T1L um, are usually tiny compared to normal Ethernet like RG45 and this switch is providing power over data line and this part is actually one of sensors or, the, or actors uh, using this power and uh, using this connection for data transfer. So now is the next part, which is related to energy efficient Ethernet. And uh, like I said, uh, for I, I started investigating this because it was kind of broken for me. Uh, I tried to use, uh, to synchronize uh, some boards with uh, PTP to synchronize clock as close as possible and it didn't work. So I started to see what's actually happening and actually this device which I was using should not use energy efficient Ethernet, but it was using for some reasons. and. Well, started investigating this. First of all, I uh, had some um, issues to, with hardware, what kind of tools should I use, so what, uh, how, how expensive will, will it be to investigate uh, this kind of issues. Um, and uh, Current current uh, kernel state was uh, like it, it needed a lot of work. Most most of cases uh, we was able to see that uh, um, energy efficient Ethernet was kind of misunderstood. So what kind of problem is usually present in most of drivers? Uh, typically, if we start connection, then we will uh, connection will exchange. Uh, authentication information about link and capabilities. And uh, usually 
one side shall say like, hey, I am supporting uh, energy efficient Ethernet for different kind of links. And other sides should see this and say, okay, I'm supporting this too. And after this, after link is created, uh, Mac drivers should actually enable this and voila, it's working. But reality was kind of different. Many Mac drivers was enabling energy efficient Ethernet before link was created or was enabling energy efficient Ethernet and probe, which is kind of weird. I mean, it won't be able to decide and link if it's should run or not. So it will accidentally work in some cases. Um, so to see if it's actually working, you'll need an oscilloscope at least. And uh, usually if you start uh, investigating this kind of issue, you'll probably find that uh, debugging Ethernet with a oscilloscope can be very expensive. I mean, uh, to get an oscilloscope, oscilloscope which is capable to run at this speed will cost you probably at least a car, maybe a house. And <laughs> Uh, you'll need very good oscilloscope, you'll need uh, to have uh, differential probes which are expensive as hell. And yes, it is possible to reduce budget if you will reduce at least your uh, target. For example, to see if energy efficient Ethernet is actually working, it is enough to have at least 200 megahertz to hear samples. So it's like budget is dropping to about 1000 euro. Maybe you'll be able to see the same picture even with 100 megahertz oscilloscope. So you'll be running like 300 euro. Um, to kind of replace, no, and be careful here, it is not possible to replace differential uh, probe, but it, if you know your setup and if you're careful enough, you'll be able to have some uh, resistors and create this kind of uh, uh, voltage uh, divider. And in this case, you'll be able to see some signals and uh, make it work for this particular use case. Uh, and you should not use power over data line for debugging in this case, or power over Ethernet. Uh, so instead of creating some extra complicated hardware, I just uh, took one of uh, our uh, Ethernet debugging helper tools, <laughs> picked some resistors. So this is kind of uh, end configuration. Um, you will probably do it even with other stuff. And uh, first of things which you usually start to fixing, it is usually not properly implemented or not implemented at all. Uh, MDIX or automatic crossover detection. Usually it is not implemented by, because nobody cares, I mean, it works, so why should anyone implement this? But it will make your life harder if you want to um, debug some things like energy efficient Ethernet. So it will be good if you will be able to make things predictable. Uh, in, in case of automatic uh, crossover detection, you'll have this kind of pulses on both twisted pair lines and this is auto negotiation pulses. They are actually transferring um, information about files from each side. And uh, for to make automatic crossover detection work, files will uh, transfer these pulses on different lines. And this is actually not what you want to have. To make it Uh, with ETH tools, you should be able to configure, you should be able to disable uh, automatic crossover detection. 
but if you get a picture like before, after, after running this command like ETH tool advertise MDX on, you should actually get this picture. If you don't get this picture, it is not working for you, so you'll need to fix first this part of Phi driver. As soon as this part is fixed, um, we can start to investigating what is actually wrong with uh, uh, energy efficient Ethernet configuration. Usually, if you run this command, ETH tool show a status, then you should get some kind of information like state, this active state. It is enabled means it. Administ uh, from administrative point of view, I kindly ask the system, please enable energy efficient Ethernet if you can. And active means, okay, uh, the system decided that it is enabled and we can enable this, so we're activating this. Then we have a uh, transmit low power idle timer, which says, after we transferred some data, for example, we're transferring some ping or whatever, uh, after this time, this is 500 milliseconds, we should be able to uh, drop uh, and switch to low power uh, idle mode. And if all of this properly configured and uh, our link partner says, or we say we are supporting like uh, energy efficient Ethernet for 100 base T full or 1000 base T full speed, and link partner provides the same or similar configuration, then we will be able to enable uh, energy efficient Ethernet for matching configurations. If it's activated and if it's working, you'll get this kind of picture. It means here all of these pulses are keep are kind of keep alive pulses, and after the after um, keep alive, you will drop power consumption, and you mostly you will not see any signal anywhere. And if it's disabled, you'll see it's like this. So. You should be able, if energy efficient Ethernet is enabled, you should be able to see this picture. And if it's disabled, you'll see this picture. And if your expectation and picture do not match, you should start fixing it. So one, one more comparison. Um, it is possible to enable energy efficient Ethernet only on one side. For example, if you are using, if you are running 100 base TX and one cable is for TX and another is uh, for uh, RX, uh, you should be able to say like, okay, our side supports um, E modes, so you'll run it and other sides do not support it, so you can combine these two modes. But at least, I don't know if it's actually working for gigabit Ethernet, but at least it is working for 100 Mbit Ethernet. If you now under control of um, this configuration, uh, now you should test if timer configuration, like for example, at the start we have seen a leaks timer was configured for 400 milliseconds. Uh, we should actually get this kind of image if we are running, for example, if we are sending some packets. If timer configuration is kind of broken and there is sometimes broken um, for different reasons, for example, uh, the clock tree is not properly configured and you are running at wrong timeout account, then you'll get wrong results here. Otherwise, if, like I said, if the system is configured for 500 milliseconds, 
we should be able to measure here something about like 500 milliseconds. And in case of gigabit connection, you'll be able to see the same picture, but for all of twisted pairs like this. And you should actually test different modes because uh, you, sometimes they have different clocks for different link states, like for 1000 MB, we probably will run with 125 mega megahertz for for 100 MB, it will probably run with 50 megahertz. So it is good to know if all of uh, expected link configuration actually working. Um, currently, yeah, I have started a discussion about uh, current state of AES support and uh, there are a lot of patches flying around. Uh, so maybe some of issues will be fixed soon, but I'm pretty sure there's still a lot of things to fix. I hope you'll be able to measure it and make things work. Uh, related to a single pay Ethernet, at, at least at state of uh, kernel 6.4 RC1, most of things are mainline, so you should be able to just use it, at least for Texas instrument and uh, analog devices files. Um, the same is about T1S standard, which is at least partially uh, supported. Uh, some of configuration is provided for ETH tools. And uh, power over data line, I started a kind of framework to handle power over uh, data line on power over Ethernet things, but it's only initial state. It supports currently only simple configurations and simple hardware. I hope we'll be able to support uh, more complicated controllers soonish if there are customers or if there are some other developers who will mainline patches. Yeah, this is current mainlining state of this kind of technologies. Do you have questions? Thank you. For the single pair, uh, Ethan, I'm question is, um, do you need to connect to RJ45 via a switch or if you have a special cable can do one side uh, single pair, Ethan, and the other RJ45? Um, moment. So this example, yes? Yeah, this, um, both sides are both SPE, but can you do one uh, side SPE, the other side RJ45, or you always need a intermediate switch in between to connect to the industrial switch? Uh, you, you can't uh, combine uh, standard Ethernet and uh, single pair Ethernet without any media converter. So you probably will need some kind of switch or media converter. If I understand your, if I, yeah. Hi. There, are, uh, there are chips with uh, Mac and Phi inc incorporated in one chip uh, mm -hmm. and doing done SPI. Um, is there any work done that uh, the, these two layers, they, they don't fit really good in, into the Linux kernel, that this uh, open alliance layer for the Mac is implemented? Um, I know at least one controller which fits to your description uh, from analog devices. It is mainline. I don't see a real problem with it. What, uh, what, do, what, what, what kind of problem do you see? Um, uh, okay, probably I, I misunderstood it, but uh, also on the mailing list there was uh, the question from uh, um, microchip uh, to, to separate these this two layers. Uh, and um, okay, probably we have to talk later about okay. it. Mm -hmm. Last question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, do you know uh, uh, different protocol uh, called uh, Broad Air Reach and uh, how it differs uh, from uh, 100 base? Uh, 
to team. one. <laughs> yeah. And what are, what are the pros and cons of using uh, one, on, or one or the other? Um, as far as I know, uh, Handout base T1 is actual end result of standardization and broader reach was kind of probably pre uh, state of standardization. So there may be some timings uh, differences, but so far I was not uh, able to see real problem to combine these devices. Maybe, I don't know if someone have experience with this, please say, but so far it was kind of working. I don't see any big issues with it. Time's up. Thank you very much. Welcome.